a very good day to all of you uh, we all understand that these are very extraordinary times and it requires an extraordinary measures now i hope we all are at home because this is the mantra to stay safe so i would repeat stay at home now let us start with the topic which is types of e-commerce so in this topic uh, we are going to understand the various types of e-commerce available and what are the basic differences among them we will also learn what are the various advantages and disadvantages of e-commerce however before going ahead with this topic or this subject which is e-commerce let's understand what do we actually mean by e-commerce so can anybody tell me what do you mean by e-commerce anybody okay no problem uh, you know if I have to define e-commerce then e-commerce is a kind of platform or a kind of technology wherein I am trading in products or services however I am also using some electronic medium which is which can be a computer or a tablet or a phone and using these things I am performing some sort of e-commerce transactions so if I have to put in a different words I am using the very popular resource which is internet so I am using this vast resource internet and I am performing transactions over this technology now e-commerce can be of many types so this is the thing which we are going to discuss in this lecture what do you mean by e-commerce and what are the different types of e-commerce so we have already understood what do we mean by e-commerce so let's move ahead and let us learn what are the different types of e-commerce so if I have to define or if I have to categorize e-commerce then I would say we can broadly categorize e-commerce in six parts number one is b2b or business to business number two is b2c which is business to consumer number three is c2c which is consumer to consumer number fourth is c2b which is consumer to business number five is b2a which is business to administration and the last but not the least is c2a which is consumer to administration so these are the six broad categorization of e-commerce b2b b2c c2c c2b b2a and c2a so let's look at each of them one by one so what do we mean by business to business now uh, as the name suggests where two businesses are doing some transactions directly so it is a kind of platform or it is a kind of e-commerce in which all the interested parties involved in a direct operations means there is no third party involved between them one business is directly transacting with another business so what can be the examples of these types of companies so the companies which are doing business with each other each other such as manufacturers which are selling their products to the distributors and wholesalers are selling their products to the retailers so this is a kind of relation which can be said or which can be termed as business to business so it is not a kind of transaction wherein a business is selling something to the end consumer means we are the end consumers but here we are not talking about those end consumers we are talking about two businesses one business is producing something and another uh, business is consuming that thing because that another business is 
in a need of that thing which that business is producing so again business to business mean wherein one business is selling their product or services to another business so this is business to business for us now next one is business to consumer now one end is business another end is consumer so by consumer we can say the end consumer so here businesses are selling to the general public are you getting my point what i mean to say i mean to say businesses are selling to the general public and that is being done through various catalogs which are available on various shopping carts means they are utilizing various shopping cart softwares and using those shopping cart softwares these businesses are selling their products or services to the consumers to the end consumers so p2c is a kind of indirect trade between the company and the consumers understood so are you, are you, are you with me i mean to say that b2c is the indirect trade between the company and the consumer here both the end are not businesses one end is business and one end is consumer business is producing something or creating something and it is being sent or it is being sold to the consumer that consumer is consuming that thing so because of this technology means business to consumer platform these businesses can directly sell their products using this online technology yes are you with me so if you want to sell goods and services to customer so that anybody can purchase any product and that too from directly from a supplier's website this is being this is known as business to consumer a business is producing a product however that business is not producing that product for himself if a business is producing something then it is being uh, produced so that it can be consumed by somebody else and that somebody else is consumer the answer lies in the definition of that particular word business to consumer yes so we have covered two points one was business to business both the ends were business one business is consuming something and one business is producing something whereas in this definition which is business to consumer one end is producing something and another end is there to consume that thing which is the consumer now let's move on to the next thing which is consumer to consumer now as we heard this term various time consumer to consumer so what does it actually mean it is a kind of facility or it facilitates the online transaction of goods or services between two people it means where an online transaction is taking place between the two people directly between the two people however we can we can say that although there is no visible intermediary involved but the parties means both the parties cannot carry out the transaction without the platform means they cannot perform any transaction without a platform which is be provided by somebody else and there are various examples which are available various platforms which are available as of now we are purchasing various products from various e-commerce platforms like amazon flipkart and there were days when there was only one platform which was available and that was ebay uh, it was the most popular e-commerce platform ever launched however because of advent of uh, this amazon and other e-commerce platform you know it, it took a back seat now we only talk about amazon and flipkart but it was also very popular so these are some of the examples of consumer to consumer wherein one consumer is listing some products on one of these platforms and these products are to be sold and 
another consumer is purchasing this product from that platform directly so are you are you getting my point what i mean to say i mean to say that they do not have to walk up to some store they just have to sit at home and using these one of the platforms which are available online they can purchase this product and you know even they can sell their product by acting as a seller so one end consumer is acting as a seller and another end of the consumer is acting as a purchaser so there is a direct channel which is being established because of these platforms and this kind of transaction is known as consumer to consumer yes now let's move on to the next thing next is consumer to business okay one was business to business next was business to consumer another one was consumer to consumer and now consumer to business here business is not selling anything to the consumer or it is the consumer which is selling something to the business how so let's look at some uh, examples for example a consumer can post his project project with a certain budget which is in his mind and as soon as some companies look at the budget and the project which might be a very important you know which which can add some important functionality in that company's workplace so these companies will start bidding on that project so uh, you know let me rephrase that thing once again there is a consumer who has created a project and he would like to sell this product to a business so what he has done he has created that project and he has put this project online by mentioning a kind of budget which he is looking for now there are various companies who look for these projects because these are very you know very very handy projects which can add some more functionality in their normal functioning so they will start bidding on that project and once they will start bidding on the project that consumer will start receiving those bid prices so he will first review the bids and once he will get the budget which he has mentioned or somewhere closer to the budget he will select that company and that company will start completing that project yes so what it gives to the consumer or to the business c2b or the consumer to business it empowers the consumers around the world by providing the meeting ground and platform for such transactions yes so it is giving them the kind of meeting ground or the platform wherein they can perform these transactions without any fear it provides them a kind of flexibility yes so this is a kind of thing which we can say that it is a consumer to business so can anybody give me any sort of example in in which can be termed as a consumer to business anyone okay no problem for example i have created a website let's take a hypothetical example i have created a website which can keep track how many users are logged down to that particular website on a particular instant of time yes this can be a project yes it can be a project and there is a company who is looking for that kind of functionality in his website so i have created that project and i have listed or i have posted this project online along with a kind of budget which i am looking for as soon as this company this company will see my advertisement this company will contact me and this company will ask me that you know this is the budget which i can 
which I can you know which I can pay for this project so if this is according to my requirement I will definitely pay for this project yes otherwise I can look for other consumers or means other businesses yes so consumer to business again I would like to reiterate my point this is a kind of platform which empowers consumers around the world by providing the necessary ground meeting ground and platform for these kind of transactions so it provides them a power and the flexibility using which they can sell their products anywhere in the world this is the beauty of internet technology you can sell your product anywhere you do not have to walk up to each and every household or each and any businesses that you know what I have created this product please purchase my product you do not have to do that you just have to create that product and then you have to list that product on various platforms which are available there online by doing that you are reaching to mass number of companies they, they and those companies might be looking for the kind of functionality which you are offering yes okay now let's move on to the next thing so whatever we have discussed those were quite popular terms and we were also familiar kind of familiar with these terms but later on two more terms were added when this internet technology was enhanced to an extent even governments started using this technology they started providing these means their functionality over this technology which is internet technology now fifth thing is business to administration now what do you mean by business to administration now in this kind of e-commerce transaction the dealings are between the company and a public administration now by public administration I mean a government it can be state it can be state oh sorry it can be town or it can be a country however this administration belongs to a government so in this kind of e-commerce transaction the dealing are directly between a company and a government that is a public administration so why this kind of thing is required so these are some of the examples we can use this thing which is business to administration for social security benefits for various fiscal fiscal measures you know we can also use this technology for legal documents to receive the documents or to send the documents even we can use it for various employment benefits if somebody is looking for a job there were days when they have to walk up to a particular government office they have to physically submit his resume at that particular office so it was time consuming also this was very it was not cost effective because you have to spend lots of money to reach that particular place let's say you are living in Mumbai and the job is in Tamil Nadu which is the southernmost part of India so you have to go there physically if this platform was not available now because of the advent of this platform what governments are doing nowadays they are posting their jobs on various online platforms which are available so by posting these online platforms they can reach to a larger audiences and the general public can also apply to many jobs by sitting at home they do not have to spend lots of money to reach that particular place they can spend a certain amount of money like the amount which is required to submit that particular form form yes so it has made the job easier for 
a public also to the administration the same is happening between business and administration so there are various things which is being required by a government from a business so instead of contact somebody else from a general public that administration or government is directly contacting the business that xyz business this is what i need and that business is directly in contact with that administration yes okay now let's move on to the next thing which is consumer to administration so those were the six different categorizations of e-commerce so we have covered five of them this is the last one consumer to administration as the name suggests one end is the consumer and another end is the administration which is the government now what is the benefit of this particular link or the platform so in this kind of e-commerce model that electronic transactions are being carried between individuals and public administration that is we do not have to do any physical thing there are some examples which are men mentioned which or we can which we can come across for example we are enrolled in some distance learning course and that distance learning course is provided from one end of the country means i am sitting in the northmost northern parts uh, northernmost part of the country and that course is being provided by the western part of the country yes this can be a possibility yes it it it, it can be a possibility i can uh, enroll in many courses from different universities because of the advent of this internet enabled technologies now i for example this pay this course is not free it charges a nominal fee so in order to make the payment i do not have to physically go to the office of that particular government run university what i can do i i can just transfer the money from my bank account to the bank account of that particular university or to the institute or to a particular kind of application so this is a kind of flexibility which i'm getting because of this consumer to administration approach wherein a government is providing some sort of functionality for that he the government is charging some amount but for that amount i do not have to go there physically i can make the payment directly by the comfort of my house that's it this is consumer to administration for us now what are the main or what are the various benefits which consumers are getting from business to administration or consumer to administration <laughs> now the main objective of both these things business to administration and consumer to administration is to increase the flexibility which was not possible before the advent of internet technologies also to enhance the efficiency means there were times when it was assumed that government offices do not work means the people who are sitting in government offices they do not work but it is not the case anymore they also have to work because of this technology everything is so transparent because of these things consumer to administration means business to administration that everything is visible to the end end users we can say where my request is there were times when you if you are applying for a passport it took ages however when this thing is automated a kind of automation not entire thing is automated but some things are automated now you will not face that hassle which you used to face 
when it was not automated or when it was not using this internet enabled technologies so this is also an example of e-commerce consumer to administration administration is providing you some functionality and for that it is charging you a very nominal amount and you are paying it by the comfort of your house yes so let's recap what were the six types of e-commerce number one was business to business both the ends were businesses no direct involvement of a consumer means end user consumer one business is selling something to the business another end second one was business to consumer one end was business it means it is producing something and another end was consumer it is consuming something the end user third one was consumer to consumer wherein both the ends were consumers they are using the various online platforms which are available and using those online platforms they are selling or purchasing products like ebay amazon or flipkart now next one is consumer to business one end is the consumer another end is the business now this consumer end is creating a kind of project and this project is kind of beneficial to the business so once he is posting that project online with a specified money or a specified budget which he is looking for that business is bidding for that product this is consumer to business next is business to administration wherein business is directly doing some sort of e-commerce transaction with the public administration or with the government next is consumer to administration where the consumer is directly contacting the administration means a government is providing some amount means a government is providing some functionality and for that that government is charging some amount and that consumer is not walking physically that particular you know, government office but he is making that payment by sitting at the comfort of their house yes so those were six different types of e-commerce platforms or e-commerce categories we have b2b b2c c2c c2b b2a and c2a right now we have just understood what do we actually mean by various e-commerce types and what do we mean by e-commerce yes now the next thing we would like to understand if somebody would like to set up an e-commerce platform means that person wants to sell his product or services using this huge resource which is internet so for that what kind of things he require or what is the basic requirement of e-commerce that we will understand first one is he must build an online store so what do we mean by a an online store so by online store we mean that he has to invest in a website because it is a saying that there's nothing like having your own store it means if somebody has a website he can you know mention or he can put all his products on that particular website and by creating a website he can divert more traffic towards his business so here by traffic i mean that he can attract more number of consumers towards his business because this website will act as attraction like if there is a shop and that shop is not very well decorated there are chances that people will not come up to that shop however 
if a very nice decorations are being done in that store also the lightings are you know very neatly placed at different places so that shop will look attractive and people would like people will like to visit that particular store the same happens with an online store if we have a website so we should design a website in a way that this looks attractive the pages should have um, and, by, and by page i mean an html page because every website is designed in an html language so the the pages should be designed in such a way that it should attract the audiences if somebody is visiting my website he will not be able to leave that website before purchasing anything this is how i should design my website yes so this was the first requirement for the e-commerce that i should create a website now next thing i should have a secure payment get gateway now what does it mean whenever somebody is setting up an e-commerce website then there must be a provision wherein if somebody is purchasing from my website then he can make the payment from various sources available or various payment options available like cash or credit card debit cards various apps which are available and then also upi which is just recently launched by government of india not very recently but it is not very uh, you know very traditional technology so what exactly we mean by secure payment gateway so there are few basic type of payment gateways available for e-commerce businesses in the country every payment gateway has a different functionality associated with it so whenever i am setting up a e-commerce platform or e-commerce website i should make sure i should you know research in advance i should do some research in advance that what kind of gateway i am looking for for my company so i must compare all the various gateways which are available and i should choose the one which is going to suit my business structure and revenue i mean to say that i should not choose a payment gateway just because it is giving me many options however in after choosing it i am regretting my decision because it is costing me huge so i must compare the various gateways considering my business structure and my revenue yes now number 3 search engine optimization uh one of the various in demand thing whenever any website is being created <clears throat> i mean to say that whenever anybody is setting up any e-commerce platform then that person also pay attention to search engine optimization because if any business is not listening or not and providing any attention to this particular thing which is search engine optimization then trust me that business is heading for a trouble because let's say what does it actually means search engine optimization for example you are selling abc product and a consumer is searching for that abc product so by search engine optimization i can make sure that once that particular keyword is being searched my website is the first website that is going to be visible on the first page are you getting my point this is what i mean by search engine optimization so if i am not paying attention to search engine optimization there might be a chance that my website link will be available on various search engines after two or three pages this is not going to serve <clears throat> any business purpose because nowadays everyone has very limited time they do not have that much time to go for go to uh, go and search more than two or three pages and if my website is being listed after two or three pages i will never going to get any customers so i have 
to pay attention to search engine optimization understood so we have discussed some of the things and thank you so much for listening to me i hope you have understood what do we mean by e-commerce and what are the different types of e-commerce and what are some of the requirements of e-commerce thank you thank you so much